welcome to another video this video i'm going to be showing you how to paint if you if this is your first time in my channel then welcome this is get some color in your life with me dave law and this is the reference i'm going to be working from and this is actually a picture that i took in lytham in st anne's so it's really nice um photograph reference and I don't want you to be fooled because it, it really it, it's quite a simple um, scene. However, uh, it's quite a difficult, can be tricky to get this sort of scene uh, done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how, how I go about this. I want to make the windmill look round. So I want a little bit of gradation in the sky. And I'm also going to be using um, some fine liner pens, just get the ink uh, from the darker parts of the lives. So I'm using the Bockingford Cold Press um, block, which I've recently bought. And I'm going to be using my Windsor & Newton Professional um, watercolours. So first of all, I did do a pencil sketch just to make sure the proportions, uh, things were, were right. Um, before I dive in with the um, pen and this is a size 3 I like that size it's not too broad not too thin it gives a nice definite line and then I will be using these Faber-Castell well one of them I'm going to be using the bold it's B I, I'm presuming that stands for bold and that's what I'm using now just to get once the lines are right and I'm happy with it move on and uh, get something more permanent now it is quite difficult to use pen on this um, textured paper like i said it is a cold pressed so it's not the roughest paper out there but it it's difficult to get especially when you got a finer tip uh, of pen it's kind of hard it's a bit scratchy on the paper um, but this one it's quite bold it's quite broad it's more like a felt tip pen um, so it gives a nice um, even coverage um, and there's it's just perfect for this sort of scene so I'm going to do the windows as well you can see just coloring in it's just like a coloring book at the moment just getting the dark ink part <clears throat> and I don't want a lot of ink on this it's just basically the top of the windmill and I don't know what they call that bit and then the actual um, like propellers i don't know um leave a comment if you know what these are called and and then the windows and that's it um i'm using the ruler just to get the lines right my arm still um, if you don't know i, I broke my a fraction of a bone in my elbow a couple of weeks ago so i do have a sling and i'm glad it's in a sling and not plaster because i would have no movement at all so at the moment I can drive, I can still paint, um, so I'm doing bits. Um, but I'm using the ruler just to get the right sort of angles, just get straight lines. I'm not being perfect with this, and I'm just using the reference as a guide. So I don't... The windmill is as good as I can get, uh, as close to the reference. But the background, like there's a church in the background and um, some trees and a few buildings... So I'm just using a bit of artistic license as well, just um, just to make the back interesting. That that's all I want. And but the main the main aim of this is just to get the lighthouse to look round. So it's got that cylindrical, if that's a word, um, give it that cylinder sort of feel. And then um, one of the hardest things that I always find in watercolor is getting a a nice sort of gradual wash or a flat wash flat wash for me is harder um but this i'm, I'm using french ultramarine so i'm just coming down the paper I've, I've wet the paper where the sky is and i'm just coming down with nice thick juicy pigment so because the paper's wet it does soften so it will get um as as clean as um smooth sort of one color as i can and then gradually fade to almost nothing at the bottom so it will be lighter at the bottom and that's what i intend um 
so let me know in the comments uh, is this something that you struggle with it, personally for me it's quite a challenge um so even though it's a simple scene it looks quite simple straightforward a nice pleasing scene it is quite tricky so i don't want you to be deceived by that um if you want to have a go then feel free to have a go something like this um maybe you find this easy i don't know maybe it's not that difficult um, but for me it really is a struggle so doing the best i can just get this um sky wash down and then once that's done i can start work um, using almost the same color on the um, right hand side of the windmill i'll be adding a little bit of cadmium red to the uh, french ultramarine give it a little slight purpley cast to the color and that will be a nice sort of shadow color so it's quite quite funny uh, this um, it really reminds me of a winter scene uh, when i was doing this it just makes me feel like i'm painting a snowman to me it it, it resembles a, a snowman um sort of so it, it does feel like a bit of a christmas scene uh, it feels like a bit of snow um but there's no snow it's a really sunny day it's a summer sort of scene but with all the white and the cool blue sort of shadows it, it to me it feels like a um a snowy scene so it does look a bit like a snowman to me um but yeah just just getting the first coat and uh seeing how i get on by the way if you like what you see so far then please do give us a thumbs up i really do appreciate all the uh, likes i get all the comments if you've got any comments, any suggestions, anything you'd like to say, then please do leave me a comment. I do answer all my comments. Um, it really does help my channel to grow. Um, the more sort of, um, the more comments, the more likes, the more interaction. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, the more interaction I get, the more it does help my channel to grow. It, it helps it to to go to a wider audience. So I really do appreciate all the comments and likes. And obviously, if you're not subscribed to my channel, if it's the first time you're here, then welcome. Um, feel free to subscribe. I do have lots of videos on my channel. Um, beginners, uh, more geared at beginners, but obviously um, everyone can learn new things from different artists, different approaches. Um, I do like doing townscapes, um, buildings, anything like that is my sort of um, niche, I suppose. Um, it's something I really enjoy doing. So I want to add this um, really nice colour for the grass. Um, on the reference it looks almost a sort of golden green colour, like a greeny olive. So I've just mixed this with uh, yellow ochre and some sap green. Um, get that nice sort of um, colour, get a nice contrast with the sky. So I'm just laying that in, uh, cutting around the the sort of platform, and then towards the bottom I'm using more the sap green touch of French ultramarine, uh, give it that sort of uh, darker green appearance. I don't know what it is, I don't know where you can see, but we can notice there's a bit of, I don't know what it is on the paper. Um, there's no, I've not done anything to the paper, just painted over it and it seems to almost repel the paint in patches. Uh, whether it's a sizing issue with this uh, Bockingford block, I'm not sure. Um, I've not really had this problem before. Don't usually use Bockingford uh, blocks. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know what this could be um, to me it just looks like uh, maybe too much sizing or uh, the papers maybe been damaged in some way and there's also like a, a bit of a scratch through the paper I don't know I thought it was a hair um, but it's not it's nothing that can be lifted out and so I'm just just carrying on and, and just ignoring that but I just wanted you to be aware um, I don't know what's going on there on the paper. So do let me know if you know what that could be. 
Um, it'd be interesting to find out what that is. So again, like I said, I'm um, using a bit of artistic license here. Um, there is a church in the reference on this side that I'm painting here now. But I just thought I'd use some sort of shapes of um, some impression of buildings, um, a few things sort of going on there. And then the right is just most of the trees and a couple of buildings sort of showing through. Um, so I, don't, I didn't want to take anything away from the, the windmill itself. I wanted to keep the focal point on that. For me, this is the my favourite part of the painting, or the painting process. Uh, the nice sort of cast shadows from the windmill uh, propellers. I'm going to call them propellers because I don't know what they're called. Um, but the cast shadow uh, coming from those, it just helps give that windmill more of a rounded feel, as well as the shadow on the right hand side. Um, and I did that by just adding bits of water as I came into the center. So it just softens that and it doesn't make it square. It gives it a round feel. And then obviously this um, cast shadow, as it swoops around the side of the building, um, you can see it just gives that more of a round feel to it. And so for me, this is, this is probably one of the more important parts of the painting. Um, just to give it that real sort of look. So I'm after keeping things simple, um, quite straightforward, as straightforward as I can make it.
Okay, let's have a closer look at the uh, painting. You can see I've um, got quite a lot of granulation on the sky, the French Ultramarine. I didn't realise how much that uh, granulated in Windsor & Newton. I wasn't aware that it did um, that much anyway, or is it the paper? I'm not sure, because like I said, this is the first time I've used the Bocking for Block. Um, but there's quite a gran granulation going on. And I wanted to keep things nice and soft and simple. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.